Hey guys, Crypt the Lazy Geek here and welcome back to the channel. Today we are going to do a long-term review of not this, but what I usually cover my telescopes with, which is this huge cover there that I can throw over my telescope. And then leave be just like that. I've made a video maybe three years ago or so about this particular telescope cover, which I've used on both of my setups. This is a Telegizmos 365 telescope cover. It comes in various sizes and shapes for different types of telescopes. And its main purpose, as its name uh, 365 implies, is that it will protect your equipment every day, day and night, all year long. There are multiple advantages to having a cover like this. The most obvious one is because you can keep your rig outside on the balcony all day, every day, all year long. Well, your telescope is always set up and always ready to go. My mount is polar aligned. That doesn't change. My telescope is ready and in the best focus position or very close to best focus at all times. My camera is ready. My wiring and cable management is also ready. There's nothing to change. My computer on top of the, the telescope is always ready and always turned on. I can always access it remotely to take control of the rig or just see what exposures I've taken. And I can do that from the comfort of my sofa downstairs or anytime I like. And this is because of this cover that I'm able to do that. It was for me a must buy because my rooftop balcony, uh, there's no room attached to it. There's just stairs that lead to it and nothing else. So if I had to uh, set up this rig and then disassemble it and put it inside every time I want to image, I would need to bring this up and down at least a flight of stairs. And then I'd have to do the polar alignment every single time. I'd have to make sure that all of my equipment is connected every single time. I'd have basically more chances of tripping the single points of failure that are part of an astrophotography rig. And of course, I'm saving space inside my house. This is a Japanese house. There's not a lot of space. So the, the advantages here are obvious. And this is assuming, of course, that you are in an area where setting this in your backyard or setting this on your rooftop balcony is fairly safe, that no one is going to steal your stuff. I understand that in a lot of countries, uh, well, this is not a good idea. Uh, but to me, this works really, really well. So to give you an idea, my routine to start imaging is to remove this cover, remove the dust cap and I'm ready to go. I can go inside on my computer and control everything remotely. It's amazing. But what are the drawbacks of this cover and how does it stand as well as how does the equipment beneath it stand the test of time? So let's have a look at the cover. The cover itself has like a very, very solid outside exterior of the cover that is already waterproof. So like main uh, goal accomplished already and inside we have this like reflective radiant liner. Uh, I'm not completely sure what the purpose is, but I'm sure it helps with heat. It helps with stuff. Uh, and beneath that liner, and you can see it has started to kind of like degrade in, uh, in spots here, there is here a blue kind of uh, additional liner. And that's like the secret recipe of the Telegizmo 365. Uh, you have the outer, the outer uh, shell, you have the inside radiant shell, and then you have the liner inside. And that makes everything works beautifully. Is that any better, by the way, than uh, a simple like barbecue cover or bicycle cover? Honestly, I have no idea. I haven't tested. I haven't compared. This is worth too much dollars for me to kind of compromise. And I know that this has been tested by many, many astrophotographers, including myself, for years and years on end. And so by using that, I know that I am not immediately endangering my equipment. I wouldn't be so trustful immediately of a solution like a, a bicycle cover or a barbecue cover, although I know that some people have been using those successfully. So maybe what I'm buying technically makes no sense, but I buy peace of mind. So that's like a disadvantage of such a cover, which is like, does it really make sense? Does it make sense to have all those, all those innovations and those covers and those linings and that design, et cetera, et cetera. The cover itself comes with like a 
uh, an elastic band so that you can tighten it or loosen it. This has, uh, the elast elasticity has basically loosened over time. There's no more real like elasticity now, but it's not a big problem. I can still uh, use it. But even when it's new, I think the biggest problem with this cover is the fact that it's open towards the legs of the telescope, towards the tripod, although you do have like sets where you can have the cover of the telescope and cover of the tripod at the same time that can help with that. But because it's open at the bottom, it is great to accumulate dew. So you can have like humid air that gets trapped inside, it condenses inside, and then you have water dripping onto your telescope, onto everything. That's not ideal. And that can very much be the case in Tokyo, where it's super humid in summer. And it can be even worse if you're in a backyard where it, and you're setting this on grass. Obviously, in Tokyo, that's typically not a problem. We don't have gardens here. Or if we do, we're rich. And then, and then if we're rich, we can build a proper dome rather than rely on this economical solution. So how do you deal with that dew slash humidity problem that can accumulate in the cover? Well, you might have seen in some of my videos that I have this kind of uh, weird stuff hanging off of my telescope, typically something like that. This is a uh, desiccant, basically. So for me, I use uh, this uh, very large, basically boxes of desiccant. It's something that I buy very cheaply on Amazon. Uh, the brand is what Shiketoru uh, Nara Dorai Petto, whatever that is. And there's one of those boxes that stays there on the telescope. In winter, when there's not much uh, absolute humidity in the air, I can use a single one for several weeks in a row without any issue. In summer though, in the super humid summer, I have to change those like every two or three days. Uh, and so that's something to keep uh, aware of. I also have in summer uh, and late summer, we have typhoon season. So when a typhoon approaches, uh, I'll take everything inside and, and just go through the pain. But that's pretty much what I do. There's other methods. You can use an electric dehumidifier, basically, and uh, some people do that. And other people have some original solutions like a fan. Uh, you put a fan, electric fan or USB fan or whatever inside, and if you have a constant flow of air, it helps recycle the air that's inside and prevent condensation. For me, it happens naturally because I'm on a rooftop balcony, effectively on the fourth floor uh, in Tokyo, which means that I have access to a lot of wind. It's not great for astrophotography and for guiding, but it is great to recycle cycle the air naturally inside here. And that wind is very strong in winter and much less strong in summer. I wish it can for the reverse because then it would be more convenient. But okay, now that we've looked at the, uh, the, the purposes uh, of using this kind of cover, it's basically a poor man's observatory. Like why go to the trouble of building your own obsi when you can just like plug, plug this on and I think it costs something like 100 to $200, depending on the size and shape that you order. I'll put links down in the description, of course, so you can have a look. And it's still comparatively expensive if you compare it to just like a bicycle or barbecue cover. <laughs> so yeah, keep that in mind. But for me, it's buying peace of mind. So what about the, the, the equipment that I've had sitting uh, under that cover? Well, in terms of equipment, I've had no issues. You can see behind me, I have the SEM60 mount. It spent, I don't know, a year, two years now under that, that cover, and it has zero problem, problems whatsoever. Before that, I used it with Skywatcher EQ6R mount. No problem. My AZ, AZ EQ5 GT at the time as well. No problem. Uh, the guide scope that I have on this telescope has been basically under uh, that cover for the whole time that I've owned it. And that's basically five years. So I have two covers, as I mentioned. Uh, the one that I've been holding here in my hands is uh, something that I bought in February 2019. And the one that I used to cover the rig back there, I bought in May 2018. So the first one is going to be almost five years old. And the second one is already over five years old. And I've had focusers also spend so much time under that uh, cover. And honestly, everything has been fine. I have seen some rust form on the, some screws of some telescopes. 
but nothing more. I've never opened the cover to see that I had like tons of dew on the telescope or water dripping or anything like that. And I think this is thanks to the uh, like uh, desiccant slash the humidifier that I use inside. And overall, my, my philosophy about this, and this is something that I mentioned in my previous video, has been that maybe it will lower the lifespan of my equipment, but in terms of the number of hours that I will have used my equipment for, I will be a huge winner compared to if I had not been using those telescope covers because I can use my rigs immediately without having to set them up and then disassemble them in the early morning. So even if I get a shorter li lifespan, I will have gotten much more useful hours out of my telescopes. Okay, so now we've talked about like the impact on the telescopes and the rigs, which I honestly don't really see. Uh, so for me, it's been protecting them really, really well across uh, over four years for this one, over five years for that one. But let's look at the state of the cover itself. So the four-year-old cover, you can see that if I look inside overall, it's going fairly well. There are patches where it starts to get a bit like bold. So the radiant liner has some uh, degradation, but overall it's looking quite well and quite good. So that's for the four-year-old one. Now let's look at the five-year-old one, and this is a completely different story. The five-year-old one has suffered much more, and I have no idea why, because I've been using those two covers basically in parallel the whole time. And it might lend credence to the idea that maybe a simple barbecue cover or bicycle cover might be enough pr to protect your equipment, because this is how it looks like inside the five-year-old cover. <laughs> The radiant lining here is completely coming apart and the lining that's between the uh, radiance lining and the outside shell, that red thing, has basically deteriorated into flakes, those red flakes there, and it's like that across the whole cover. And this has been like that for uh, over a year now. So there's like been a wild difference even when this turned four years old compared to uh, the, the four-year-old one that I have there that is almost intact. I've asked uh, Telegizmo about this and they told me that, yeah, uh, degradation can be expected with covers that age, but still I find this like quite a lot. And the problem that I have with this is that it leaves a lot of red flakes on my equipment. <laughs> And I get a bit tired of red flakes on my equipment. So I've been, but then I've been using it like that with effectively the inner linings completely broken and useless for over a year. So why do we need Telegismo 365 covers if I've been using that without any issue on my telescope for over a year? Does that mean that uh, a simple barbecue or, or bicycle cover would be enough? Or is there some magic with just the outside lining uh, or the outer shell of that cover. I don't know. But this is something to consider if you're thinking about buying those covers. There's also some other covers by Telegizmo, which as far as I understand, basically consist only of the outer shell. They're not rated 365 as covers, and they're probably not as good for the equipment. But up to now, I haven't really had any problems. But then maybe I'm just not seeing the impact yet, and maybe it will degrade my telescope over time. I've actually been debating with myself about buying a brand new Telegizmo 365 to replace the one that's, uh, that's degrading here. And by the way, like the, the flakes here, the inner lining was red in this one. In the uh, four-year-old one, it's blue. But I have checked and I'm told it's exactly the same uh, material. It's just the color is different. But yes, this is basically a long-term review or, long or long-term update on those Telegizmo 365 covers. Overall, I'm still super happy that I've bought them. Although I have kind of second thought, like why did one degrade so much more quickly than the other when it was used in exactly the same conditions? I mean, the, the four-year-old one is pretty much pristine. And then since I've been using the degraded one for over a year now, and I don't really see any impact of, on my equipment. The, the computer that I have on top of the equipment all the time as well is running perfectly fine. Does that mean that I could make do with much cheaper covers that I could get at my local dollar store or Hekuen shop here? 
So please let us know what you think about those covers and about how you would protect your equipment if you were to leave it outside 365 days a year, 24 hours a day, and whether it's worth the expense for those Telegismo specialized covers. I'll put again the links down in the description if you ever want to support the channel without any cost associated to you and your planning on buying anything from Amazon or from Agena or from High Point Scientific, you can also use the links in my description and that will uh, give me a small affiliate commission at no cost to you. But the most important is to like or dislike the video, leave a comment, really show to YouTube that this channel matters and has some good information. And if you want to even more support the channel, you can join my Patreon or join the channel as a member. Honestly, you guys really make the channel possible. Thank you so much. But with that, thank you so much for watching. Don't forget whenever you can to look up at the stars and I'll see you next time.